Imagine that you're driving down the road when all of a sudden, a big SUV cuts you off. There was no warning and you could have gotten into a bad accident, but you were too busy reading your newsfeed to notice. And rather than giving bad drivers a honk and a middle finger, your automated car might just send a strongly worded letter of ones and zeros to the offending vehicle. It's crazy to think about, but the future is now. After years of hard work and research, we're finally on the brink of a revolutionary new form of transportation. And with the hub as your GPS, we won't let weird distractions and funky rumors throw you off course. This is how self-driving cars actually work. As we get moving, don't forget to click on the subscribe button. The hub will show you how tons of other things work too. Software and Hardware Self-driving cars are equipped with state-of-the-art software to make sure they can function as best as possible without human intervention. After many years of testing, the cars use top-of-the-line laser-based radar systems called LIDAR. LIDAR, short for Light Detection and Ranging, functions in tandem with state-of-the-art GPS and Inertial Measurement Unit Sensors, or IMU, to pinpoint the location of the car down to a quarter of an inch. An additional radar control will kick in whenever an obstacle comes within about 15 to 30 feet of the vehicle. These sensors exist to keep the car running and to keep you safe, but in order to be convenient, and efficient, the car's brain uses deep learning technology to review cameras and GPS data to predict the fastest routes to your destination. With special algorithms always running between the computerized parts in and around the car's engine, the vehicle can also calculate the probability of actions to be taken by other drivers and the chance of natural occurrences as you speed down the road. That said, it'll be a long time before fully autonomous cars are available for public consumption, and even then, the human passengers will need to stay somewhat alert in case the car has sensory or technical difficulties. Cost one of the biggest perks of this technology is that, considering the service it offers, it's not too expensive. In a standard self-driving automobile, the extra-sensitive global positioning system needed for these cars, which would utilize internal altimeters, gyroscopes, and tachometers for accuracy, ranges between 80 to 6,000 American dollars. Video cameras mounted on the roof range between $125 to $200. Radar sensors on the bumpers reach a combined total of around $150. The LiDAR device, towering on top of the car, is the most expensive at a max of $8,000. And central computers, which start, steer, and stop the car, can average out to three times the sensor cost. As calculated by Boston Consulting Group, cars with the ability to put on autopilot mode would reach an extra $5,500 more than the asking price and $10,000 for the machinery to go entirely driverless. That may seem like a good chunk of change, but it's pretty affordable when you think about how quickly a science fiction vehicle like this could be at your neighbor's fingertips. Safety and Communication Features to make sure your boss's robocar and your neighbor's 1995 Corolla are able to share the road in perfect harmony, government agencies like the United States National Highway Traffic Safety Administration have stepped in. They're analyzing the data to see what roadway prep is needed for self-driving cars' big debut. And with their new suggestions and regulations, certain futuristic features may already be included on the cars in your driveway. Nowadays, many new models include rear-mounted backup cameras, and as of May 1, 2018, this is a required feature by the NHTSA. According to the administration, they believe this development will annually save 69 additional lives. Forward collision avoidance is another requirement, and whether you've noticed it or not, it's been in several different makes and models since 2003. This helpful feature applies extra pressure to the brakes when the car is approaching an obstacle at too great a speed. There's still an even bigger computerized factor in our daily commutes, and that's lane detection. Some cars currently on the road have computerized autopilot on standby. It kicks in when a human driver isn't moving fast enough and the cars need to swerve into a new lane. And researchers believe that the next level in road safety, whether cars are fully driverless or not, relies on a type of vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication. This way, cars, regardless of where they are made, would have some universal set of signals that could be transmitted to avoid accidents and keep the commuters safe. Car companies but who's involved in making all this happen? Well, everybody. Once upon a time, our nation was facing off against the Soviet Union in a bitter space race. Now, Silicon Valley is teaming up with car companies in a competition to come up with the most bankable self-driving car. It's what you call a race race. Tesla believes they'll have a model ready to hit the pavement by 2018, whether the Department of Transportation is ready for them or not. Google, Toyota, Honda, and Nissan think they'll be road ready by 2020, with Google's prototypes already having logged 1.8 million miles as of July 2016. Now known as Waymo, Google's self-driving car project unleashed a fleet of 100 modified Chrysler minivans with empty driver's seats throughout the streets of Phoenix, Arizona. Volvo, on the other hand, not only expects to have driverless cars on the market by 2020, they go so far as to say their version will be death-proof. A whopping 81% of car accidents are caused by human error alone, but the Swedish car manufacturer expects their cars to reach a full 100% accident survival rate thanks to their hard work, manufacturing materials, and steep testing regulations.
Volvo is known for their high safety standards, but their XC90 model is a precursor to the upcoming fully driverless models, and that car's key components are going to be expanded upon going forward. First, it has an ultra-thin steel frame that's five times more powerful than aluminum. This, along with the new placement of the car's engine, gives the car stronger support and a lower center of gravity to protect the passengers. When paired with smart self-driving technology that can stay on the right side of the roads without lanes and steer along treacherous dirt paths, Volvo might be the brand to beat. Taxis and Trucks it takes years and years of development, but businesses are expecting a huge payoff, cheaper labor costs, and cheaper goods for consumers. Something factoring into these profits, however, is that a truck driver's pay tends to account for a third of transportation costs. What's good for the companies may be bad for the people who need the work. In Logan, the most recent Wolverine movie, set in 2029, robot trucks speed down freeways without tractors. The only part needed is the trailer. It's more of an additional detail to communicate the time period to the audience rather than a part of the plot. Since the future in Logan is a pretty bleak place, we can assume the filmmakers are using this as one other oddly familiar yet creepily different element of a not too distant time ahead. Like the other companies mentioned earlier, Daimler, which manufactures Mercedes-Benz, expects robot-controlled big rigs to start traveling across the highway starting in 2020. With these changes in store, there'll need to be a new set of jobs for the drivers replaced by machines. Taxi drivers might also be replaced as companies like Uber and Lyft hop on board. Uber paired with Volvo and the Carnegie Mellon University Robotics Department to test vehicles through the streets of Pittsburgh in 2016. On the other side of the US, Lyft teamed up with Drive.ai in San Francisco to test its latest vehicles with human power passengers and see just how the time of day and weather can mess with the car's fussy sensory equipment. Pros and Cons the auto industry has been moving in this direction for a long time, but it's still a controversial idea. Of the positives, the most important is the increase in road safety and the easing of drivers' daily commutes. Since vehicles would no longer need to rely on human operation, they could likely move at faster speeds, avoiding traffic and simplifying parking. Although the general shapes of the cars we know and love might eventually change into a form that's totally unrecognizable, we'd be trading the look of cars for much more comfortable road trips. Imagine how boring a movie like National Lampoon's Vacation would be if the family was able to take their living room-shaped talking car. There'd be no drama, but at least everyday people would be able to get from point A to point B without honking the horn or yelling at the congestion. In terms of healthcare, experts argue that the decrease in accidents would cause rising medical costs to shrink. According to the U.S. Department of Transportation, every human on the road has the same value, $9.2 million. It's always a little cold to reduce life to a number, yet multiply that by the amount of people injured or worse in accidents each year, and you'll see the physical and financial toll that accidents can cost the country each year. On a more positive note, disabled individuals and the elderly often need to use trains or buses to travel from place to place. With a car at their disposal, they'd be given much more time and freedom to go where they want to go and do what they want to do. Plus, a chain reaction of cause and effect would free up law enforcement. With humans no longer 100% responsible for driving, speeding and DUI charges would go down. Then the police could spend more time focusing on matters impacting the community. And two other issues would be dealt with involving the DMV and insurance companies. With less drivers on the road, that means less of a line at the Department of Motor Vehicles and less of a need for car insurance. As the website auto.loan proposes, car insurance may become extinct since eventually the computer will be making all the decisions. Perhaps the premium will be paid by the car manufacturer instead of the driver. For each pro, here are some of the more shady cons to be worried about. Some experts warn that with the increased energy needed to power the additional devices on board, increased fuel emissions could lead to more pollution. Outside of the smog effect and the larger price tag, government's transportation departments need to come up with new regulations and licensing to make sure there's an international standard for these cars. And that doesn't even account for the simple technical concern that impacts all of our computers, tablets, and cell phones. What if our car gets a virus? If someone hacks into the new Ford update, could they mess with the GPS? Could they control the direction in which a person's car is traveling? Could they track someone's location in real time? Those prospects can seem pretty scary. There's a lot we don't know when looking ahead. Yet, we learn from the Terminator franchise that the future is not set. There's no fate but what we make for ourselves. As with all the other advances of this crazy modern social metropolitan world we're living in, we'll unfortunately need to wait to see whether the good outweighs the bad. Financial experts at Forbes say that the safety benefits of computerized cars can give $642 billion per year back to the US economy alone. Despite the unknowns, self-driving cars just might actually work to solve our problems, but we won't know for sure until we actually see them all in action. Until then, full speed ahead. This was how self-driving cars actually work. Since nobody's invented self-viewing YouTube content just yet, roll on through the hub again soon because these videos aren't going to watch themselves. See you next time.